So guys, we're continuing our discussion, our open talk about cryptocurrency. But another thing in this channel, um, I'm just going to start posting videos on just being smart with your money because uh, obviously making good investment is key, but it doesn't matter how much money you make. If you do not know how to manage it and you don't know how to uh, reduce your costs, you're going to blow through it. A, an easy example is Allen Iverson makes 200 million, but he had, he's bankrupt. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's talk about, uh, you know, making money in crypto is great, but also being smart with your money. What, what are your opinions? Right. So it's a con in me, like when you look at the bell, when you look at the income statement, it's not just like how much you bring in, it's also your expenses. And sometimes like um, investing is good, but especially crypto is very volatile. And we always say that you have to invest with money that you can afford to lose. And that means that <laughs> you have to be careful with the rest of your money, like the money that you're playing with and investing and hoping it will pay off. Beyond that, you also have to have separate savings just in case things don't go well, you know? And that's why it's important to always be putting away money that you're not investing or not doing anything with um, because you just never know what's going to happen. And it's important to just save money because if you're not careful with money, there will never be enough money because there's always a more expensive thing. There's a more expensive car, a better house. So you just have to control yourself. And a lot of people, especially my generation, don't know how because it's a consumeristic culture. We always want more and more and more. I blame Instagram. Instagram <laughs> is just gives everyone FOMO and everyone wants to do the next best thing so they can share it on their news feed. And then all of a sudden, everyone's just competing on who can blow the most money on dumb shit. <laughs> right. At some point when you own too many things, they own you, you don't own them. Like once you go into a certain lifestyle it's kind of hard to revert and there's a certain expectation and you don't want to go down there because it's going to be more and more expensive and yeah it's important i, I mean at, at this point in my life i feel like it's important to live as simple as possible um so yeah i've gotten better over the years i really even listening to your channel i just stopped spending i'm like i don't really need that bag or i don't really need to have so much clothes like I just really cut back on my spendings and try to invest as much as I can and um, save the rest because I feel like because I feel like they're going to be another dip. I'm saving my money. Hopefully, maybe buy a piece of property or something like that when there's another crash in the economy. Cash is king in recessions, and that's the one thing that I think you brought up a great point is that if you're investing everything into crypto, well, if the market takes a dip, you don't have fiat. Then how do you buy that dip or you're forced to fire sell, right? Like if you don't have enough cash right. reserves to pay your rent or your other stuff, what are you going to do? You're going to have to sell at a bad price, whether it's your cryptocurrency, your real estate, your stocks, whatever. So I really do feel like you have to always have a reserve of fiat. So if you have to sit yes. on your crypto, let's just say you bought in like 2014 and then there was that huge crash. You know, obviously, if you were forced to fire sell your Bitcoin for a hundred, two hundred dollars, you know that sucks. But if you had bought Bitcoin at a thousand and you were like, you know what, I'm not going to sell until it hits ten thousand in you know 2014, you had to wait till 2017. But like, look at the reward. And obviously, if you're living paycheck to paycheck or if yeah. you're putting in too much that you can't afford. Um, yeah, you're going to get screwed. Because so. when economy crashes, it crashes and we tend to forget as people. I think our brain tends to forget like this crisis we actually lived through, you know? Because <laughs> our brain is like trained that way, sort of, because if we remembered every traumatic experience, our brain would explode. <laughs> but we should not forget because when economy crashes, you lose your job, your spouse loses your job, mortgage payment becomes due, like it just crashes all in you and it can be very stressful if you don't have reserves. And it doesn't matter where you're from, but it can happen, exactly, yeah. you know, whether you live in the U.S. or you're outside of the U.S. Especially now, it's global economy, everything is connected. So when the economy is going to crash here, other countries are going to crash worse. <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but our, our audience is about 53% um, international. So only 46% of the people watching this channel are from the U.S. So we have a lot of United Kingdom and Canada people, but that's why we do try to keep a global idea. And that's what I love about crypto. It is kind of a global right. asset, but uh, let's go ahead and wrap this part up. Uh, we will continue our interview. So thank you for watching and please leave your comments because like I said, we're going to do future uh, discussions like this and uh, depending on what comments are left will help, you know, help us uh, generate the topics we talk about and uh, Keep it, keep it interesting for everyone watching. So thank you very much for watching, and we will thank both you. talk Bye. to you guys soon.